What's going on guys? Kel Mark with TheEasiestBusiness.com. Today I just want to go over a few pointers. I see a lot of people online, they want to break into commercial painting. There are residential painters already, but they don't know how to break into commercial painters. Well, uh, today I'm going to give you a, just a few quick tips. I have them listed out here already. Um, uh, first thing I want to go over is this list of getting started. So this is going to be how that you get on bid list to do commercial painting. So a lot of people say, how do I uh, get bids? How do I do bids? How do I get in contact with people? This is a list of uh, four people that, or four methods rather, uh, that I think you need to target. Um, these two are gonna be uh, local GCs and drive-bys. I think these are gonna be your most effective methods. I think that these are gonna be your easiest methods to get your foot in the door. So local GCs is pretty self-explanatory. Um, Google, uh, whatever city you live in, uh, general contractor. So if you live in Phoenix, type Phoenix general contractor, you'll see a, a big list of general contractors depending on how big the city is that you live. Start calling them. Hey, I'm a, I'm a painter, licensed and insured. Um, I'd like to get on your bid list. Sure, what's your email address? You give them your company email address and as soon as they have opportunities in the area, they'll shoot it out because it's preferred that they have multiple bidders on the same job so they get the best price. So they'll get, you know, uh, a building to build, a high rise or whatever, hotel, um, a tenant fit out, anything like that. And they'll send that bid out to five, 10 painters and they'll pick the lowest number or they'll pick the number that they feel like is the most accurate and they have in-house uh, bidders that's how it works they have in-house estimators and they'll compare their numbers and their takeoffs to yours and uh, they'll decide based on you know how many ever bids they get and they'll review all of them as well so local gcs that's what you want to do drive-bys this is anytime you go and you drive by a construction site let's just say you're going down the road and you see a new commercial building being built um, depending on the city you're in that could mean a new high-rise being built it could mean a wendy's you know but nine times out of ten you're going to go by that construction site and it's going to say wendy's coming soon blah, 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 general contractor, this builder or whatever. Nine times out of 10, the builder is going to advertise uh, who they are on site. Um, if they Usually they'll have a phone number as well. And if they don't have a phone number, you can just Google the name and call them. I've even went by a site that didn't have a phone number, didn't have a GC listed. But when they, when they hung the construction fence, the orange construction fence around the perimeter of the job site, uh, there was a company name on that construction fence. Um, and it was actually the site work subcontractor. Uh, when they put it out, they had the construction fence tailored to their name. So I Googled them, called them, asked him, asked the guy who answered the phone who the GC on that project was. They told me the GC of the project, no problem. Then I Googled the phone number of the GC, called the GC and got on the bid list. So. Those are going to be your two most effective methods. Um, national GCs, you can look these up. There are plenty of national GCs that you can Google. Um, they mainly travel around and open up chain restaurants and chain stores um, and do work on those. So, like a lot of people will follow like Walmart, Target, you know, Wendy's, Kroger, grocery stores, just just ch any chain store. There, there's companies that follow. Uh, those businesses around to wherever that they uh, are opening locations to and you can get work like that so you can get on these people's bid list and say hey I wanna I wanna you know let me know whenever there's a new whatever uh, in this state and they'll put you down for a certain state a certain city a certain area a certain geographical region and anytime they open up those chains in within those perimeters um, you'll be notified and you'll be asked to bid the job. And this is probably gonna be a little bit harder for a lot of people, exchanges. Um, when I worked for the biggest contractor in Virginia, we we were part of a builders and a contractors exchange. So it's basically like a hub, a website that you go to. You actually have to pay a membership to be a part of it. Um, but basically you could see every job being bid and that's where most of our documents came from. So a general contractor, uh, would get a bid and he would post it on the exchange and, and everybody who was part of that exchange could go look every day um, and see what new job opportunities were coming up, what their due date was, and they could just download the documents right there. Um, so let's say you're in Philadelphia. I would Google 
Philadelphia Contractors Exchange or Philadelphia Builders Exchange. And whatever comes up, that's what I would look into. A lot of times those do cost money and memberships to keep the maintenance on the website. Uh, and then you have like two or three gatherings a year uh, where you meet up with GCs and subcontractors and have socials and things like that. Um, just a couple tips when you first get into it. This is going to be your most important thing, in my opinion, is reading blueprints. Um, the issue I see a lot of residential painters they run into is they don't know how to read plans. So you don't need to have software. Software makes it a little bit easier on the math side. Um, it's a little bit harder to get the hang of as well. I've used software and I've done it by hand. You can actually do it faster by hand than if you use software, but software is a lot cleaner. You're a lot less likely to make a mistake if you use software. Um, but you need to learn how to read plans. The first thing you need to do is you need to go get you a printer that can print ledger or 11 by 17 prints. You don't need to print the big construction size drawings that they keep on site, but you also don't want to be trying to scale off a uh, eight and a half by 11. Um, so you need to get you a printer that can print an 11 by 17. Um, and then you need to get you an architectural scale. It's like 12 bucks, 15 bucks. So, uh, to do a takeoff on drawings, all in all, you, you can spend 300 bucks, 400 bucks, and you'll be good. Cause you can get a printer at office Depot or whatever for 250, 300 bucks that can print 11 by 17s. And then when they upload these plans in 11 by 17, you can print them. You can get a scale for 15 bucks get you um, a little calculator. This is actually the calculator that I use, just the basic four function calculator. I like the big ones for the buttons. I've used this one for years. Um, paid like 15 bucks for it at Walmart. And so that's all you need really, pen and paper. And uh, you know, I could teach you guys how to read the plans, but uh, that's, that's how you need to get started. You need a printer that'll print 11 by 17 in an architectural scale. Um, and another important thing is understanding schedules and your LDs. Your LDs are your liquid, liquidated damages. So when you start looking at these jobs, pay attention to the specifications. Usually they'll throw a schedule in there with the spec package. Um, it'll show you how many days that they give each trade for each phase of construction. So if they had this 10 rooms to paint, um, you'll look in there, it'll say three days for primer, you know, three days for finished coat. So you'll have two days to do two finish, I mean, three days to do two finished coats, or they might break it out three days for primer, two days for, for, for first coat, two days for final coat, a day for touch up. Because if you delay that schedule, if you can't meet that schedule, and you bid the job and you sign the contract and you can't meet that schedule and you push the project back, uh, there'll be a section uh, about liquidated damages in the project specifications or you know, in the general info or wherever they put it. There's different contractors do different things, but you'll find a piece of information saying, uh, some projects have been thousands of dollars a day, some are 500 a day, some are a couple hundred a day, um, but you can get up there in tens of thousands of dollars a day uh, if you delay the project and it's found to be your fault. So if you can't meet that schedule, just don't bid on that job because if they're running a tight schedule, it's a big job and they need it done in a week, two weeks, and you don't have the manpower, I wouldn't even worry about bidding it um, unless you can somehow pull labor out of your butt uh, at some point where you can call another contractor and get help if you do land the job. So um, another couple things to note just off the top of my head, be careful. Sorry about that. Be careful of uh, Davis bacon wages. Um, these are mainly found on military bases and government jobs. Um, so let, let's say you pay your top painter $25 an hour. Um, you may be in a, in a city where the government requires people, um, you know, who work on this job or, you know, this military base to make $35 an hour minimum. So you're gonna have to pay everybody at least $35 an hour. Um, and a lot of times they'll make you pay fringes as well, which fringe benefits could be like an additional, you know, seven to 15 bucks an hour more than the base pay. So you have to pay attention to stuff like that. Um, I would recommend if I were just starting out in commercial, only do like standard commercial stuff. Don't do any industrial. Industrial is probably where you can get screwed the most. Um, no like water treatment facilities, anything like that. I would just focus on strictly commercial work, restaurants, uh, commercial buildings, 
high rises, tented outfits, things like that. Things which can be done in a couple of weeks. You can, you can make really good margins on them. Uh, you can meet the schedule and they're a lot easier to take off. Over time, you're gonna learn uh, what things to pick up on, what things not to pick up on. You'll, you'll notice a lot of times once you've uh, bid over and over and over again, uh, that you, you'll notice things that aren't on the plans that you need to account for and things like that. But that just comes with repetition and, and bidding the plans and then going and looking at the job and doing the job. You'll say, oh, we need to charge for this and this. You know, that wasn't really on the plans. That wasn't really talked about. Um, but anything that's not in writing, just remember, talk with the general contractor about it. Um, change orders are a big part of commercial uh, construction. Anything that's not specified, make sure you put everything in writing. And if you do any extra work, make sure you keep track of it because you're going to have to get paid for it at the end. Um, another big thing is uh, your net pay. So you can do, some contractors do net 30, net 60, net 90. That just means uh, the payment term. So 30 days after the job gets done, you'll get paid. 60 days after the job gets done, you'll get paid. 90 days after the job gets done, you'll get paid. I know a lot of people who want to go into commercial, they couldn't handle 90 days because you, you still have to pay for material and you have to pay for your, your employees. And uh, those paychecks don't stop just because you're not getting paid. So you're not going to get paid on that project for 90 days. So you may have tens of thousands of dollars uh, you know, on hold from general contractors, but you may be having to pay out those tens of tens of thousands of dollars to Sherwin Williams, to to whoever, PPG, to your employees, to for for your insurance, for your gas, things like that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I just want to bring you guys a quick video. I uh, just want to say congratulations on making it to 2022. Hopefully it was better uh, than 2021. Hopefully it will be better than 2021. Um, I plan on grinding pretty hard this year. I really want to scale up. Um, the education side of the paint business, maybe get into some other trades. I really want to scale up my real estate business as well. Um, I'm trying to do big things in 2022. So I'm going to start off day one, January 1st, 2022, um, with a lesson. And like I said, hit the subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you got any other tips about uh, just breaking into commercial painting, what are your experiences and what do you consider uh, you know to be important when you first start out leave me a comment let me know below and like i said guys uh, happy new year hope it's great hope it's prosperous for everyone thank you